as an economist, what does it mean when you see a melt up like we're seeing? Is this the Bernanke chart? Well, uh, it's partly Bernanke. It's partly a good economy. I mean, corporate America is doing quite well. Profit margins are at record highs. Earnings are at record <clears> highs. <throat> Earnings growth is pretty good. So I, I think right. fundamentally, stock prices <clears throat> should be up. And you know, even with the higher stock well, prices, valuations aren't too bad. Help me. I, I made some news last week of Bill Gross at 3% uh, economy. You're even looking out a year or two, and you're beginning to talk about a 4% economy. Yeah, that's I think right. you're the only one in the block doing this. Yeah, but more will soon. Uh, actually, I'm finding some people more optimistic than me, which has been, that, that's unusual. A but, change. How do we change. get to a 4% yeah. real GDP economy, a nominal GDP of 6%? It's on the edge of China. <laughs> well, it's not quite there. Uh, two things. One, the fiscal drag. So all the tax increases, spending cuts, they're at their apex. Uh, the, the wind is blowing its hardest, uh, literally this spring and summer. And then that blows less hard next year. And then the second thing is housing. Housing is going to swing into full gear. Now, I think everyone knows that housing's kicking into gear. I think they're just underestimating the juice it's going to provide to the economy. The juice that gets us to 4%. Yeah. Mark, the economy is a 2% economy. How do we get to your better view if you're curbing your enthusiasm now? Well, I think in the near term, the next six, nine months, it's going to be soft because all the tax increases have to be digested. And we'll get a sense of that in today's retail sales number, which you've been talking about. And the spending cuts, part of the sequestration, the cuts as part of the sequestration are only part of the cuts. And you put a big number on that, the drag. The From the sequestration? Yeah. yeah, it's about half percent of GDP in 2013, about half a million jobs by the end of the year, quarter point on unemployment. So what will non-firm payrolls be in July or August? It's a good question. You know, right now, the underlying rate of job creation is 175 to 200 per month. So if you told me we're down to 125, 150, we could even get a month sub 100. I think that's possible. We look at the stock market, the Dow at a record high, yeah. that wealth effect that Chairman Bernanke is creating. How far is it going to help consumers here? Uh, I think it's a, it's a big plus. Uh, not as big as it's been in times past, only because I don't think investors, uh, households, really truly believe yet. I mean, stock prices are up, down, all around. And is am I really worth what I see on the screen or on my statement? So there is a wealth effect. I think <clears throat> you can see it at high-end retailing. But uh, it's not as potent as it's been historically. There is a trend going on now that's overwhelming. The jobs report seems like old news. Let's look at the unemployment rate. And this goes to your, your wonderful work a few years ago with Alan Blinder. The path to a sub-7% unemployment rate. We've had a wonderful trek from 10%. We get out to below 7% in early 2014. Do you think the Fed's looking at that chart? Do they just extrapolate forward this improvement where we have a sea change in monetary policy well, I don't, early I, next year? Yeah, I don't think they'd actually extrapolate. I mean, but they have a view. They have a forecast. And it sounds pretty similar to that. Um, you know, according to them, we get to a 6.5% unemployment rate by mid-2015. And that's, of course, when they think they'll start to raise interest rates. But this could get derailed. Do I understand this could get derailed by sequestration where we go uh, sub 100,000? Yeah, I, I don't think it's derailed. I think it's uh, there's a pause. Uh, you know, so we're at 7.7 seven on the unemployment right. rate. So if you told me by the end of this year we're 7.5, I say that sounds about right. But by 2014, assuming we survive the slowdown in the growth, and I think we will, mm -hmm then we kick into higher gear and unemployment will move south. You have a great read on the private sector employment right now and with all your work as part of piecing together ADP reports, that monthly report on private companies, and you break it down into small businesses, yeah. mid-size. What's the most discernible trend right now to watch there? Uh, interestingly enough, uh, it's now uh, the, the job growth across size class is now more uh, even. If you go back a year ago, small businesses weren't doing it all well. Big guys, uh, Mo Moody's was doing fantastic. And small businesses are yeah. better now? Yeah, actually they're doing yeah. a lot better. Kristen, let's set up your idea of the middle class flat mm -hmm. on their back. You say they're flat on their back. Where's the wage growth of the middle class? Uh, it's, it's no real wage growth. So two There's no wage growth. Two percent <laughs> nominal when we have two percent inflation, so zero real wage. But Kristen, you say the high end is shopping till they drop. They're comfortable. You know, you, your, your kids are back at summer camp, your 401k is flush, you feel good. So they feel good, they're, they're pursuing and buying luxury hey, this goods. This is the key question of the week then. What's the wage growth of the haves if the middle class is flat on their back or is it flat for the high end too? Uh, no, I think that wage growth is better there, uh, although they're benefiting from the wealth effects of the stock market yeah. and, of course, housing. I mean, they own homes. Uh, people in lower income groups, low middle incomes don't, and the house prices aren't helping. But helpful. is this an argument for the president who says that the Republican budget policies, <clears throat> for instance, leave the middle class behind? 
Well, I think it's an argument for we've got a problem with the income and wealth distribution. I mean, that's gotten more skewed uh, over the past 25 years, and it, uh, the reasons for that are firmly in place, and it's just going to get worse. And I, and I think this is a very serious long-term problem. And therefore, when we think about how to address our fiscal problems, we should do it through the prism of what it means for the income and wealth distribution. Yeah, man, I, this sets us up for a great retail discussion. Absolutely.